we are recording now. <clears throat> okay, welcome all to this uh, core interim meeting, last of the series before uh, one nine. It's Mark and Jaime sharing. Not well applies. Please uh, get aware and confident with them if you are not already. And that said, we can switch to the presentation from Christian on this document then. Yep. Um, so I'd like to go with you through what I think is are the next steps for, for making OSCORE cacheable and for accessing, um, yeah, basically to, to get the deterministic request here. Next slide, please. Um, so the just to get everyone on the boat again, um, this is coming from the work out of the work about multicast notifications. There we have the case that the server can tell the client that there is already already a request that is being actively responded to, and the server can tell that client that request, and all is fine for for that matter. So the client still needs to verify that request, but that's that's not too big of an issue, and there is no need for determinism there. Um, but that only flies well when we are in a situation where there are many responses to a single request. If we are in a, if we want to just use a cache more efficiently, then sending the request, getting the proper request back, and then going with that request to the key for all but corner cases of which multicast notifications is one um, doesn't save a lot. Next slide, please. So for today, I'd like to focus this on the deterministic requests part of cacheable OSCOR, which really is the thing where I'm trying to get at there. So there's a lot of things like token requests in there that ba basically um, abstract away from the, mul from the multicast notifications, but deterministic requests is, is the core of the thing, and that's what I like to talk about and not lose, get lost in details about all the steps for getting there. Next. Just not yeah. probably we're talking request you, you meant ticket requests. Oh, yes, ticket <laughs> requests. Um, and it's probably this wrong, the same all over the slides. If I start making such a mistake, then I'm very consistent in doing it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, yes, ticket requests. Okay. <laughs> Next slide, please. Sure. So um, this is what I imagine this will this should look like in the end. Um, the client sends a request that is a regular OSCOR request that's in a in a fetch rather than a post because it might be observable and because this is generally what enables all the caching. OSCOR doesn't forbid that. It uses a preset up um, member uh, uh, um, key ID from within a group. I'll get to that group later. Um, then it adds one thing um, that is not there in OSCORE yet, that is a key, key ID detail, which really works. Think of it for all intents and purposes as the key ID context, just that we can use key ID context and key ID detail at the same point in time. Um, and then the rest of it is, is, a request, is the remainder of a request message. Um, the KID detail, in order to get these deterministic requests that we want, where many clients can produce a request and that is byte by byte identical to the point where it doesn't even count as nonce reuse because it is just the same message. Um, and to, um, to, to avoid using the same key for different requests, we have to find a way to use a different nonce. So, what I originally planned to and what just doesn't work out because of the size constraints is to use that hash in here that I'm, I'll talk about right away um, as a nonce. We can't use it as a nonce because the nonce in, um, is quite limited in this application. So we have, so this goes really into the key derivation. Um, this would be, so, so what, what, what the client would do is it constructs the request as a kind of the, the inner request hashes that along with the with the AAD and puts that ha that hash into the KID detail. That goes into the key derivation process, a key gets derived, it sends the, it encrypts the request, sends it to the server, and the server uses the same um, the same key to respond to that request. So um, yeah and um, next slide please. 
So what do we need for this? Um, we oh, we need. Yeah. Sorry, how how um, I, I, read, I take it you were ready with the explanation. We should understand why this is cacheable now. Um, yes. Um, if if it, if it's not. Um, so, it, um, please, please explain carefully why this is cacheable now. Okay, um, this is cacheable now. So on, on the technical side, this is cacheable because it's using fetch. And as long as the server in the response um, chooses not to send the max age to a ridiculously small number, then the proxy will, by the option properties that are in here, um, cache that response. So that's the technical side why this is cacheable. On the practical side, this is cacheable because many clients that send the same that send the intention that send the same request by what they mean will also arrive at the same request in terms of bytes that are in there because what they mean is encoded in the inner option that is the get the temp the uh, URI and any other inner options and every and because everything else is deterministic on the group that this is set up with, which will largely gloss over here, but there needs to be a group that's set up. As long as those are the same and the group is the same, everything else in the request will also be the same. Okay, so, so you're saying that you, you make sure with this construction that the cache key will be the same for, for the different requests. Yes. And that is assuming then that you are you actually have a group here and you're sharing a key in the group. Yes. So the so, so the that, way how yeah. is that okay? So but so you can't cache unless you are in the group. Yes, you have to be in the group. And the the expectation similar to the multicast notifications is that the server um, that a server where clients would do this advertises a group and allows for the clients to join that group um, so so in this setting in you would one client would be able to fake responses for I mean would be able to fake server no responses, or do we have any so yeah. so the thing that prevents the server from uh, any other client from faking server responses is that usually uh, with group or score and this is all group or score and it's I'll get to why it's not here yet, here in this line, that at the end there is a signature. So while the um, while any client um, can send requests and they are not even distinguished. So if I, it says KID equals client here, that's literally client in the sense that there's one key ID that every, every client is using, but the server is using a different sender ID to respond and the server will use um, the regular signatures that are, are there for um, for group as cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Karsten has a comment in the chat. I don't know if. if uh, yeah, the, the just uh, Jaron saying you can't cache unless you are in the group. Um, the, the proxy does the caching, and the proxy is not necessarily in the group. Um, so I, I think what what you meant to say is you cannot be part of a successful caching transaction as a client or a server unless you are in the group. You can't hit the cache without being in the group and still make sense of it. Right. Great. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. So, could it be? Could I somehow after? Uh, okay. So I can't join. I just wonder if I am not part of the group. Could I join? Uh, could I realize that I should join the group? Uh, or maybe this is this goes beyond the, the discussion here. But so um, <clears throat> if. Um, if you don't already know that you should join the group, um, then you will try to get a to, to send the request in a regular way. Yeah. And we might apply the concepts of multicast or score to redirect that client towards joining the group and doing it in the deterministic way. But in all cases, but those special cases, we can just respond as well. So the client has to have some pre-configured or discovered knowledge of that it should use cacheable as well for this. Right. And or, the, or it could get the answer and an attachment saying, by the way, next time please join the group. Yes, that would be that would be that would be an, a good thing. Okay. Thanks for explaining. Please, please go ahead. So, so maybe just to, to to go into one one example that I have in mind here. Yeah. Um, this could be this could be well usable for firmware updates um, when the client um, 
when a lot of clients access the same resource, and then they can just all send their requests and they know that others will do this too. And they will know the a bit of the, about the firmware server and will join that group first. And then they all hit the same cache at the at the border router or even within the network. So just a, a follow up question: the signature is not included in the cache key then. Uh, the signature, the signature. If there were any signature, it would be included in the cache key, and that's the point for the next slide. Okay, because that would be different signatures for different clients, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, um, yeah. The, um, maybe, maybe let's go to the next slide right away because that's the that's the that okay. that important topic. Fair enough. So, um, no signature. Uh, why don't we have no? Um, what it says in the dash, I think it's still the dash OO that I've uploaded last, is that um, we would you that basically every client would get access to the private key material um, that is associated with that client and then deterministically arrive at the signature. Um, that construction was put in there primarily because the syntax of group boss core does not allow for no signature to be here. And also because there was this, there were previous discussions around group boss core that um, where the participants insisted very heavily on source authentication. Um, the thing is, by now, I don't think this is a good idea um, because while it's technically um, avoiding all those pitfalls, practic it's practically just a workaround for, a, for the core questions that there is, that is, why do we not need source authentication here? And if we can argue that we don't need source authentication, which we'll have to do if we want to sell to anyone who objected not having that, um, that we are now sharing private keys, we can just as well explain to them that for these particular cases, no source authentication is necessary because in the end, if there were source authentication, this would all not be cacheable anymore. And on the other hand, everything that we say around where this can be used will very um, precisely state that this can only ever be used if the requests have no uh, side effects on the server. That makes sense. Okay, so 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 you actually you, you actually don't sign the request in this case. Yes. So what I propose and what I think should be um, easily doable with actual implementations is that this particular participant of the group, that is the client, picks a different signing algorithm then is generally used with that group. And that signing algorithm is the null algorithm um, in which nothing is actually signed and the signature is zero bytes long. And I understand this algorithm exists, but it's not talked much about because it's not actually doing anything, but it might still have a number somewhere. So effectively, um, the request is still matched by the group key, right? Yes. So that needs to be part of the explanation. Um, yes, um, but okay, yeah, um, so it's still Mac. Um, and at any rate, I mean, the thing is, even if it were not Mac, I don't think it would make much of a difference because the server must only process the request if it's safe to do so. Sure, the Mac is an additional safety mechanism. That means that if someone finds a way to exploit something in the message processing, it, they can't even get there without being part of that group. Um, but that's an additional security mechanism against implementation errors and not a requirement for the for the confidentiality of anything in here or for the for the side effect that side effects that could be. So you're arguing with safe. You you also need to think about uh, uh, work avoidance for for DOS protection. Um, yes, and for work avoidance, the Mac, Mac certainly um, does a thing. Yes, much better than a signature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but what uh, what is the difference between um, one group, the second group member sending, uh, calculates the message using the group key, or that the second group member copies the first, uh, the first request? Is, aren't they identical? Isn't that 
purpose. The, the, the point that they will, will be identical. I, d I don't quite understand the question, I think. Yeah, they are identical. So it's not, it's basically no, yeah. So the, the value of the Mac is not on the, on the proxy. The proxy will receive the same message and it will respond yes. to the same, yeah. Yeah. Um, so back one slide, please. So yeah, um, we've, I think we've talked about the group um, group members. Other prerequisites here are that um, we have to have an, a deterministic AEAD algorithm. And um, I've mentioned that the last time I presented about this, we can probably have a flag in the OSCOR registry that says, is this, uh, is this algorithm suitable for this thing or not? And chances are that no algorithms will work for OSCOR anyway, that well, this is not the case, but I, I'm not sure and I don't, wouldn't require that. And yeah, the the, the other thing is um, no no two messages must ever use the same key with the same nonce because many of our algorithms will behave very badly if we if we allow that. But given that everything that it, that goes into the into the later encryption process is also part of the key derivation, it will um, it will not. Uh, it, it should not ever um, result in the same key being used to protect different things with the same nonce unless there are collisions in the in the key construction. Yeah, and the last point here is, um, sure, this all depends on the clients all arriving at the same inner request, but if they don't, yeah, so what then? There will be a few variations um, can't can't be avoided, or if it can, that's out of scope for here. Okay, I think you have reached a point when you, where you actually deserve a good review. <laughs> <laughs> I can't provide that right now, but I think this is really, this is really worth something to think about. There are various ways of doing uh, the things you do, you say, talk about here, exactly how to make sure that the key is different and, and setting of the nonce and so on. Yeah. But we should discuss the options there. Um, sorry, I haven't provided any, any input since last meeting. No problem. We really prioritize this after the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So one, one thing where I hope to get a bit of input from you is also in, in, in uh, comparing this with the previous work on OSCON, which I, don't we don't really know when how for which reasons that was removed from Oscor, but I think that in the end this is doing something very similar. Yes, so it was removed because that was mainly related to the pub sub work, and, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and the, that didn't we didn't need that for the pub yeah. pub sub didn't progress and still is not moving very fast. So that was the reason why it was taken out. And uh, I think that there is, there might actually be other reasons to bring back something like OSCON. Um, some people think of using ad hoc, but not OSCOR. And uh, maybe we would like to have that, I mean, ad hoc to set up something which you transport cozy objects between. And then you, you'd like to have similar features as OSCOR with, uh, yeah, the replay protection and the non-generations and so on. So, so that might be another reason why we should uh, revive it. I mean, this this will not help with replay protection. So, um, the the server side handling of this uh, pretty much relies on replay protection being switched off, which can only happen if the if the request is safe, which is a prerequisite anyway. So, um, it works here. But if if there's re if anything else wants OSCOR's replay protection, it probably won't go through this channel. Okay, that's a good point. So let, let's see what what is the right, uh, what kind, what you need ex except the, uh, I mean, what OSCON was essentially, essentially doing, doing the things um, we did in OSCOR, but not taking into account that this was necessarily restful operation. This was just the payload. Mm -hmm. That was maybe the difference, and, and uh, yeah. whether replay protection is needed or not, we could. Yeah, I need to revisit that. I, I can't. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess it's two slides forward now. Um, yes, although <laughs> it's... Michael right. reaches and just joined, by the way. Hi, Michael. Hello. Um, Michael yeah. Richardson, co-chair. Who is that guy? Um, so there's 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 one point I've added to the slides, really as as an afterthought. Um, but this comes also from the comparison with with information centric networks. Um, once a client is rather confident that this request is probably already in someone's cache at least in the at least in the server's cache which I means the, ser the server could have an internal cache um, then it might be an option to really practically only transport that hash at all elide all the other options and the payload um, and for this this would additionally require that the proxies in between recognize this particular flag in the oscar option and treat this as the sole cache key as opposed to um, taking the payload into account. Um, if this fails, the server will uh, respond bad requests and the client would have to go around and resubmit the full thing. But as long as it doesn't fail, this just allows for a lot shorter requests, um, which may make a difference when there's a lot of them coming in and hitting the same cache. But that's... I, I briefly thought that this might um, this this might be relevant as a way of avoiding the um, the signature situation, but really it doesn't help here. Sorry, Christian, I I I didn't catch this Oscar option with this flag set could be used as standalone. Show what what which, what is this flag? Um, the the um, what what did I call it? KID detail. Is that the is that an uh, oh that is a new that is the new that is the new Oscar that is the new um there's a new flag yeah there's a flag the, the new thing okay the new thing I'm, I'm introducing right okay so with that set uh, and technically we, we, we might consider using another flag here to to ensure that the client uh, the proxy really only does this when it's a good idea um I don't know yet but okay and and why would that be standalone? So usually the cache key, uh, the cache key is composed of all the options that are cache key plus the request payload. Yes. Um, and this would this option with this the Oscar option would get a special handling by a proxy in the sense that the proxy may um, use this option alone as the cache key as opposed to using all those other things. Which means that a not, that a request that only consists of the hash of the request, as opposed to the full request including the hash, will hit the same cache key, and will thus inhabit the same place okay. in the cache. Okay, thanks. But really, the the important questions are on the on the slide one back from here. If there's any more comments here. I have a question on the fetch uh, semantics, like. It, does it need some sort of um, specific semantics like CNML fetch or CNML I patch did, or is kind of like a, assumes that the semantics are understood? Or so this um, uh, fetch is already part of OSCore for regular request for for kind of as as it is now. It's just only used for observation because you can't observe a post, but you can observe a fetch. And funnily, there is nothing in, in RFC 8613 um, that forbids the client to use the to use fetch for requests that don't happen to be observed. So really it's it's just as good as a post just and mm. okay. and there's no there's no real semantics too much of it because the the, the semantics layer is only ex is only there when you, um, when the Oscar when the Oscar layer is removed, and by then it has a pro it has the proper get or fetch code of the inner message, where then any CNML fetch semantics could apply. okay. So you, it would be the same CNM, existing CNML semantics that would apply afterwards. Yes, but that would be about the inner code. So the if you go back two slides. Okay, so the the oh, okay, sorry. Go ahead. 
Uh, one more. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there's the inner code that's in the in the second line from the bottom. That's the get, and this is where all the regular. So this is the actual request in a sense. This is the request that gets processed by whichever handler is there on the server. The outer code is just there to satisfy the semantics of an, a co-op request without giving away anything about the container. Okay, so it could have been a post or whatever else as well. It can't have been a post because a post is not safe. Uh, yes, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I, think I, oh, I think I got it this time. Thank you. Okay. So it doesn't really need any kind of semantics at, at yeah. that point. We were here and it looks like the last one anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Christian. Any more comments or questions? OK. Well, I stop sharing this. And we can then switch to the other topic, uh, stateless. But Michael has a comment, in fact, in the chat. I'm just really. Since I missed half the conversation, I'm just asking if I understood correctly. If uh, for item potent actions, the request is blinded, that is encrypted or something, so that the cache can't see the request response, but can still cache it. That's what I understood yes. the whole point. Yes. Was. Yes. Cool. That's really neat. <laughs> Shades of Johnny Mnemonic, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, stateless. So the issue that remained was the question of how do we generate or what advice do we give for the size of the replay window? And Karsten indicated that my text was inadequate in a way that he, that he didn't yet understand uh, or hadn't yet determined. I think I fixed it in the most recent push to the pull request 15. Oh, did you? I think. <clears throat> okay. Um, I want to hear from people who are smarter than I, whether I'm right. Marco, can you show the pull request? Yes, I was about to ask if Michael wanted to, but I can. I am not there yet. I'm typing the All right. right. That. No worries. Okay, fixes for 07. Right, here we are. Well, as you can see, there are a few typos, but uh, further down, Uh, why are you not seeing the whole thing? That's hmm. weird. Uh, I can expand here, but it should be about unchanged things, though. Let's. <clears throat> can you maybe just go on on the commit? I think it's. I no. think it's just. Yeah, get, go to files changed. That's the problem. Oh, okay. Uh, which comment, yeah. Karsten? Yeah, go on files changed. Okay. Yeah, it's line. Uh, 923, I think, is the relevant part. Here we are. Oh. <laughs> okay, so just go on the second commit. I have no idea why GitHub is doing this. Uh, I've, I've <laughs> been in this position before. Yeah. This one. That's right. It looks like right to me, and my files changed when I, when my. Interesting. <laughs> Here. Oh, but I only see, yeah, one. There we go. Yeah, that's the right part. I think that's the right part. Yeah. And I updated that once more. It no longer says 0 0.1 requests per second, but one request per 10 seconds. OK. Which is so the same 93, thing. But... Given a max transmit weight of ten of 93 seconds, where did that number come from, 93? Is that a default? Uh, yes. If, if you go into 7252, uh, it's not a default. It's when you when you compute what max transfer weight needs to be with the default parameters in 7252, you arrive at 93. That's why I'm using that. I think we should motivate the 93 somehow. Well, it's motivated in 7252, so maybe we should just reference that. That's section. what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Given the. Yeah. From RFC 7572. 
Did I get that right? 7252. 7252. I, I, I have twice uh, uh, cited the wrong RFCs by typos uh, uh, of dyslexia and had ADs ask, why are you citing that? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's section 482. I, I can put this in, into the pull request. It's in the, um, it's in the minutes too. I'm taking the notes as well. Okay. So you hit reload, you'll get, uh, I think maybe you have to go to files change to get hit the, get the suggestions. Okay, so one request for 10 seconds, yes. Any request that is not answered within 93 seconds will be considered a fail. Thus, at most 10, 10 that is ceiling 9.3, requests can be uh, outstanding at time. Okay. Okay, so you're basically basically coming up with the same statement that 32 is plenty. Uh, and um, in fact, it's even better than plenty because the nice part about it being larger, at least eight bigger than 20, is that it means you can shift it by bytes rather than bits uh, as you increment your 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 uh, your uh, low water mark. Uh, just an editorial comment: uh, the value of max transmit weight alone uh, should be sufficient to understand that um, any request not answered within that three seconds will be considered to have failed. Right? Yeah. Yes. So. We may rephrase as, for instance, given a co-op max transmit weight of 93 seconds, any request that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, thus, if we consider a request rate of 0 0.1, then at most 10 requests can be. See what I mean? Uh, why, yes. don't yeah, me yeah, yeah. why don't you let me share and we'll type what you just said. I'm, uh, I'm typing this in right now. Okay. I, can, I can write what I mean in, in well, your... Um, here in the end. Right. So this should be already correct, right? Um, and well, the rest of it. Right. Well, I had put, I'd suggested something after 93S. So let me just put those two things together. Uh, yeah, I've just pasted the remaining text. Okay. If you're happy, if you're happy with that, then I will spin the document in a, as soon as I'm able to and um, uh, let the AD know. Yes. I checked the whole document again, and this uh, looks all very good, actually. <laughs> and I think there are still two open issues on Gita, but one is won't fix, and the other one I think was addressed in the document, so probably they just have to be closed. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's great. Then I guess we're done. I don't have anything else more. Great. So I think you can resubmit as the resubmission system reopens. OK. So can you also take care of replying to the reviewers? Yes, I will do that. That's great. Thank you, Michael, very much. Uh, another point I had in the back of my head uh, is for Karsten, um, how are we with the Shepard write-up of the core conf documents? Uh, I have a little distraction at the moment because uh, RFC 8949 is in auth 48. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, I, it's another delay, but uh, it, it's going forward slowly. Okay. I think Michael was also eager to see, especially yes. in the proceeding. Yeah. Uh, can it happen around 109 or right after it? Uh, preferably before. That would be very great. <laughs> Thanks, Karsten. Okay. We are 
at the end of the originally planned agenda for today. Anything else you wanted to discuss or raised before 109? No. Okay, so this was the last interim uh, for this series, and we actually plan to have a new series starting around mid January, uh, ideally uh, until 110. Uh, otherwise, we have two sessions for core planned for uh, 109 on Tuesday and Friday. And we have a draft agenda. Please provide feedback if you want to give more input or propose changes. Okay, if there's no other comment, thank you all for today. See you next week at the hackathon and at 109. Thank you. Thank you Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Uh, Herman? Hello, Christian. Yeah. Um, just um, if, if, you, if you still have the allocated remaining time of the meeting, we could go through the Shepard um, stuff right away if you, if you, um, you want. Is it, um, I was hoping to do a bit uh, later today because I haven't touched it for okay. a long time. Um, no problem. If that's okay. And also I have yeah. the daughter I haven't seen her since 8 a.m. So I want to chat <laughs> or at least okay. make noises. Thanks. Okay. Hey, and guys. Bye. Ciao, ciao. So, ciao. Bye, bye. Bye.